Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 Lesson 32. In this video, we're going to learn about solving systems of linear inequalities. So now that we've finished talking about solving systems of linear equations, we talked about two variables, three variables. We learned about graphing, substitution, elimination, and matrix methods. I want to revisit something that we talked about in Algebra 1. It's basically the same thing, but I want to make sure that you understand it before we get into college algebra. So when we talk about a system of linear inequalities, it looks like this. We have x plus y is greater than negative 2, and 6x plus y is less than 3. The solution for this would be where the two graphs overlap, or the area of the coordinate plane that satisfies both. So all I need to do is simply graph each inequality and look for the overlap of the two graphs. So we know the quickest way to do this is to solve the inequality for y. So for this first one, I would have y is greater than, subtract x away from each side, so minus x minus 2. For this one, I would subtract 6x away from each side, so y is less than negative 6x plus 3. So once I have this information, I can just take it to the coordinate plane. So let's just copy it. And so what we're going to do we know that the boundary line in each case would be what? It would be a broken line because we have a strict inequality here. Y is strictly greater than, Y is strictly less than. So in that case, the boundary line is not part of your solution. So I think about Y is equal to negative X minus two. I graph this with a broken line. So the Y intercept occurs at zero comma negative two. So that's there. And my slope is negative one. So I'd fall one, go to the right one. Fall one, go to the right one. Or I could rise one, go to the left one. So let's draw a line. Remember, I'm gonna break this guy up. So let's just kind of break it up. Okay, so that's my line. And where would we shade? I can erase this boundary line. I don't need that anymore. Y is greater than. So greater than means I shade above the line. So my solution for this guy right here, I'm shading this way. So all of this. Anything above that line would work as a solution. Now for the second inequality, we have y is less than negative 6x plus 3. So again, another broken or dashed boundary line. So we think about y is equal to negative 6x plus 3. The y-intercept occurs at 0, 3. Let me erase this. We know where the solution is for the first one. So it's right here. And then negative 6 is the slope. So fall 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Go to the right 1. Fall 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Go to the right 1. All right, so let's graph that guy. Okay, and again, this has to be broken up. So let me take my eraser out and let me just change the size of it. We'll just take some chunks out of it. Okay, that's good. Just make sure everybody knows that it's a broken line and we wanna shade below this line. So if I'm shading this way here, below the line, and I'm shading above the line here. Let me shade this one in black. So this was shaded above the line. Okay, that's good enough. So anywhere that is below this green line, but also above the blue line would work as a solution for the system. Let me kind of get a highlighter going. I'll highlight this as best I can. Okay, went over the line a little bit, but I think you get the idea. Anything above the blue line and below the green line, okay? Anything that fits that criteria. So it's this area of the coordinate plane here. All right, let's take a look at the next example. 
So we have 3x minus 2y is greater than 10. Negative 6x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 16. So for this one, again, we want to solve each one for y. Let's go ahead and subtract 3x away from each side of the inequality. So we'd have a negative 3x over here plus 10. Then I'm going to divide each side of the inequality by negative 2. Now remember, we haven't worked with inequalities in a while. If you divide both sides of an inequality, or you multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative, what do you have to do? Remember, 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 you have to flip the direction of that inequality symbol. That's going to become a less than. So you'd have y is less than negative 3 over negative 2, I can write as 3 halves, and then times x, 10 over negative 2 is negative 5, so minus 5. So that one is y is less than 3 halves x minus 5. For this one, what am I going to do? I can add 6x to each side, so I'd have 4y is greater than or equal to 6x plus 16. We can then divide both sides by 4. And what are we going to have? This will cancel with this. I'll have y is greater than or equal to 6 over 4. Each is divisible by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 3 halves x plus 16 over 4 is 4. So let's write this as y is greater than or equal to 3 halves x plus 4. Now, what do we see here before we do anything? Same slope, different y-intercepts. Now, think about this a little bit more. This is a less than. Y is less than. So I'm going to be shading below this line. This is a greater than or equal to. I'm going to be shading above this line. Will this system have a solution? No, it will not. And I'm going to show you that. For the first one, you have a strict inequality. So that means your boundary line is going to be a dashed or broken line. So we graph Y equals 3 halves X minus 5. The Y intercept occurs at 0 comma negative 5. The slope is 3 halves. So up 1, 2, 3 to the right, 1, 2. Up 1, 2, 3 to the right, 1, 2. Up 1, 2, 3 to the right, 1, 2. Okay, and this is supposed to be a broken up line because this is a strict inequality here. So let's get our eraser out. Take some pieces out of this thing. Again, just enough to make it clear that, hey, this is a dashed line. The line is not part of the solution. That's all you need to do. Okay, so I think that's obvious. All right, so the next thing is it's a less than. So that means I would be shading below the line. So I would shade in this direction. Okay. Now, for the next one, I have a non-strict inequality. So that means the boundary line is going to be solid because the boundary line in this case is part of the solution. Y could be greater than or Y could also be equal to 3 halves X plus 4. So for that or equals to, you have to have a solid boundary line. So my Y intercept here occurs at 0 comma 4. My slope is again 3 halves. So up 3, 1, 2, 3 to the right, 1, 2. Up 3, 1, 2, 3, to the right, 1, 2. Or I could go down 3, 1, 2, 3, to the left, 1, 2. Down 3, 1, 2, 3, to the left, 1, 2. Okay. Now, this is a greater than or equal to, so I would shade above the line. So I'm going to shade in this direction. Now, is there any area of the coordinate plane that satisfies both? No. Below this line satisfies the first one. The line and above the line satisfies the second one. There's no area of overlap, so there's no solution. There's no solution here. And again, we found that out right away, that we're going to have the same slope but different y-intercepts, and then we investigated further and we looked at the symbols. We knew this one was a less than, and this was a greater than or equal to, 
So we knew this was going to be the scenario where we're going to come across, right? Where there'd be no overlap, and so we wouldn't have a solution. All right, for the next system we're going to look at, we have x plus 2y is greater than or equal to negative 2. We have 3x plus 2y is less than 2. We have 2y is greater than or equal to, subtract x away, so negative x minus 2. And then we would divide both sides by 2. So that would give me y is greater than or equal to, you'd put negative 1 half x minus 1. Now for this guy right here, let's subtract 3x away from each side of the inequality. We will have 2y is less than negative 3x plus 2. Let's divide both sides by 2. You'll have y is less than negative 3 halves x plus 1. So y is less than negative 3 halves x plus 1. If I look at this first one here, the boundary line will be solid. I'm basically going to graph y equals negative 1 half x minus 1. So the y-intercept would occur at 0 comma negative 1, and the slope is negative 1 half. So down 1 to the right 2, down 1 to the right 2, or up 1 to the left 2, up 1 to the left 2. All right, so this is a greater than or equal to, so I'm going to shade above this line. So I would shade everything going this way. Now, for the next guy, I have a dashed boundary line. So I have y is less than negative 3 halves x plus 1. So I would graph y equals negative 3 halves x plus 1. Let me just erase this temporarily. The y-intercept occurs at 0, 1. So that's here. The slope is negative 3 halves. So down 3, 1, 2, 3. To the right, 2, 1, 2. Down 3, 1, 2, 3. To the right, 1, 2. Or I could go up 3, 1, 2, 3. To the left, 1, 2. All right, so let's break this up. Got a little eraser. So let me reshade the first one. We had a greater than or equal to, this was the first one here, the line in black. We were supposed to shade above the line. We did, but we had to erase it so we could draw this one. So let me reshade this. So we're shading above the line. Now for the second one, we want to shade below the line. That's a less than. So let's shade this in a green. So you can see where it overlaps. So anything below the blue line and anything at the black line or above the black line, anything that fits into that region. Let me kind of highlight it. Well, the black line itself is included here up to that point right there. And then let me kind of highlight this. The blue line here would not be included because it's not part of the solution. Okay, and I know I went over the line, but just pretend I didn't. Okay, so I'll shade all this. So that's where the two graphs overlap. And this is an infinite area. We continue out here forever and ever and ever. But we just look at a small portion just to get a general idea of where the solution for the system would be. So anything below this blue line here, not including that blue line, going down, that's also including the black line but going up. So anything that I've highlighted in yellow, that region of the graph, would satisfy the system.